We all know that clouds are fun to look at, but did you know that observing clouds can give us valuable information about our lives on Earth? Did you know that throughout the day, half of the Earth's surface is covered with clouds? That's a lot of clouds. Some clouds travel slowly, others faster. There are thin, wispy clouds, dark, heavy clouds, clouds that are super high in the sky, and entire cloud banks. But a cloud is not just a cloud. Scientists use many different kinds of measurements and classifications to define clouds. Clouds are classified according to size, height, color, and the way they form. Clouds are grouped in four families, low, medium, and high clouds, as well as clouds that span several levels. And each of those cloud families include different cloud formations. In other words, there are lots and lots of different kinds of clouds, and you thought they were just pretty to stare at. Scientists study clouds for two main reasons. The first is to help predict the weather. The second is to study the effects of climate change. Let's talk about the weather first. Do you know what a meteorologist is? That's someone who studies the Earth's atmosphere to help predict the weather. Maybe you've seen a meteorologist on the news. They're usually standing in front of a weather map. Meteorologists can study the clouds to tell us what the weather's gonna be like over the next 48 hours. That's two days. Here are some different types of clouds and what they can mean for the weather. Cirrus clouds are white and wispy, and they stretch out across the sky. They usually mean that we'll have good weather for the next day. Alto stratus clouds are gray or blue clouds, and they mean that a rainstorm is coming. Cirro stratus clouds are like giant white bedsheets, and they cover the entire sky. They usually mean that there'll be rain within the next 12 to 24 hours. Cumulus clouds are those giant white cotton ball clouds, these can be tougher to predict. As long as they stay shaped like cotton balls, then we'll have good weather. But sometimes these clouds can stretch high and long, and that means a thunderstorm may be coming. There are lots of other different types of clouds. Look some of them up and see how they can help predict the weather. Clouds do more than predict the weather, though. They also have a big impact on global climate changes. They affect the temperature and energy balance of Earth. Clouds trap some of the Earth's energy and heat, so they help determine the temperature of our planet. Activities such as the burning of fossil fuels and cutting down Earth's forests pollute our atmosphere. This causes more of the sun's heat to be trapped on Earth. That, in turn, has major impacts on our climate. Because this is so important, NASA uses satellites to measure Earth's clouds and energy from space. Information gathered from these satellites continue to give us a better understanding of clouds. And that helps us learn more about potential climate change. See why it's so important? In the 1980s, NASA had a satellite program called ERBI, which stands for Earth's Radiation Budget Experiment. This satellite gave scientists an incredible amount of information on how clouds affect Earth's climate. Scientists learn more about clouds than they ever had before. Today, scientists use NASA's Ceres to study the climate. Ceres stands for Clouds and the Earth's Radiant Energy System. Ceres helps scientists determine how much of the sun's energy is being absorbed and reflected by clouds in the Earth's surface. Let's talk to one of NASA's scientists, Lynn Chambers, who uses the knowledge gained from studying clouds. We're looking at understanding um, how clouds influence the amount of light that gets to the ground and also the amount of heat that gets sent back up into space. So we're mostly looking at it from that sort of broad issue rather than from the local weather perspective or anything like that. Some of the things that we're looking for are contrails, um, which are hard to see from space because they're so small. Um, small cirrus clouds, small cumulus clouds are hard to see. Thin clouds are hard to see. And then as I mentioned, the multi-layer issue, uh, we get complementary information from the ground and from the satellite that's very helpful. So we just have to see what data we get and see what we can learn from it. Wow, Globy. Who knew there was so much to be learned from studying the clouds above our heads? You can learn to better predict the weather or measure the impact we're having on our planet. So the next time you're outside, take a look at the clouds and see if you can determine whether it's going to rain or shine.